Dr. Kleipas, and this is Rose, our veterinary technician. And she's going to help me with an exam on Jumbo. This is Jumbo. In the previous video, I talked about what to expect during your pet's wellness exam. I wanted to share with you some more information to prep you for the next visit to your veterinarian. As I mentioned in the other video, regular wellness exams help you stay on top of your pet's health by catching the earliest possible signs that something is wrong. Part of a wellness exam involves your veterinarian performing a physical examination. One important part will be the first few minutes. Your veterinarian will observe your pet and how it walks around the room or how it sits on the examination table. The more nervous your pet is, the longer your veterinarian may allow so that they can relax enough so that we can get some accurate readings of heart and respiratory rates. The next step usually involves your veterinarian simply running his or her hands over the pet. It allows us to assess the pet's hair and skin as well as to feel for any lumps or bumps. Your veterinarian will also use their hands to palpate the abdomen for signs of any enlarged organs or abnormal masses. Jumbo, you want to stand up? Oh, good boy. Oh no. <laughs> so during this time, your veterinarian may possibly require that a veterinary assistant or technician assist in gently restraining your pet for your safety. If your pet has no known food allergies, we are likely to provide your pet with a tasty food treat so that your pet associates the visit with something fun and positive rather than any fear or anxiety about being in a doctor's office. Once your veterinarian has finished using their hands to examine your pet, they will then begin using other tools. A stethoscope is the instrument used to listen to the sounds of the heart and lungs. If your pet has remained relaxed enough, an accurate heart and respiration rate can now be recorded. The veterinarian can listen for any abnormalities of heart rhythm or sound suggesting diseases of the heart muscle or valves and the pulses in some of the veins will be felt for and counted. Eyes and ears will also be examined using special instruments. When looking at the pet's ears, keep in mind that it's never normal for your pet's ears to smell bad. So this is an otoscope that we use to examine the ears and so your technician will restrain while we examine the ears. <laughs> The vet will examine them for odor, redness, drainage, and any buildup of debris or discoloration of any kind. Now the eyes are examined also with an ophthalmoscope, and we are looking for signs of redness, gross, gross on the eyelids, excessive dryness, cataracts, or any irritation to the surface of the eye. Right, Jumbo? It's not too bad. Good boy. <laughs> A thorough exam also includes looking into the pet's mouth. Now we evaluate the whole oral cavity, including the gums and the teeth. So, Jumbo has a lovely bite. He didn't ever get those braces he needed. <laughs> but we look at their teeth and the entire oral cavity. Now dental disease is one of the most common diseases seen in pets. Oral hygiene is so important because dental disease involves more than just bad breath. Infection in the mouth can lead to spread of infection to the other organs of the body, such as the heart, liver, and kidneys. So poor oral health can lead to pain when your pet is eating, and that can affect appetite or be a factor in weight loss. The final step of the appointment will be collecting the temperature. Now this involves lifting the pet's tail, and inserting the lubricated thermometer, and it is lubricated, and it's not the most favorite part of most pets, but generally it goes okay. And these new thermometers are pretty quick, so that's all there is to it. In the next video, I will discuss additional things to expect at your pet's wellness exam. In the meantime, please visit texvetpets.org. It's the most accurate and reliable pet health information online. Until next time, here's to our furry friends.